So today's lecture we will focus on the biggest social network at the moment, which is Facebook. We've looked at the other networks, now it's time to look at Facebook, and we're going to see through many of these networks we have the same sorts of actions that we can accomplish over and over. But then each network has its own nuances and demographics and that sort of thing. We talked about previously that maybe a tech savvy audience is good for Google Plus, a young audience you might find on Twitter, uh, and so when I got to Facebook, that when I said that it is quote unquote everyone. So we've heard of Facebook most likely, you and one and a half billion other people, and it's been around since 2004. So it celebrated 10 years already, and in the beginning, it was only a network accessible by college students, specifically Harvard College, I believe. Then eventually it went on to be accessible by other colleges, it built a critical mass, and then they let everyone else in, uh, us that weren't in college anymore. Then you could get a, a Facebook account, and um, eventually then companies uh, got in on the deal of Facebook, and that changed things. Uh, yet again, every time there's a change on Facebook, people that use Facebook hate it. And there's an outcry. And then a week later, we forget that anything happened and we keep using Facebook. Well, as I've said previously before, for business purposes, I think Facebook is a really good network. For personal and for my own social media and connecting with friends and family and such, I don't like Facebook. I don't like to add my content and my photos and chat with friends and all of that. I just don't like Facebook. I don't like I don't like the, 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 mostly the philosophy behind Facebook and the people behind it and that, that invented it and its constant um, privacy snafus and such. But for business, it's very, very effective. Question? What, what, what do you mean by the concept of people behind it? The people behind it, if you've never seen the, net, the, the movie The Social Network, it's all about the rise of, of Facebook and the people behind it. Of course it's dramatized, but it's based on a book. But the people behind it, like Mark Zuckerberg, has gone on record several times that he doesn't believe privacy should exist. So he's the CEO of the largest social network in the world with the most information, of private information, and he believes, him personally, uh, uh, privacy is antiquated. So a lot of us don't believe that, so we don't want to be part of that social network uh, that people believe that. Just uh, behind you first, yes. Uh, I was going to say, I'm sure his statement is limited to maybe things that are one of put on the internet. Well, that goes without saying that when you put things on the internet, there is that aspect that they're um, public in a sense. But the thing is that you're putting so much private information in a public network that you think might have privacy controls and there's always been problems with the privacy controls of Facebook. For example, tangibly, about a year ago, uh, Mark Zuckerberg's own sister posted a photo of a family get-together, she said it on private, and it ended up on the front page of the Wall Street Journal. So even if the sister of the CEO can't control her own private account, you know, how can we as individuals do that? And yes, they keep improving the service, but all the while, they keep gathering a lot of information on us. When, it, when you log in and it asks, what did you do today? What did you read? What's your favorite author? It's not asking you to be nice. It's asking you to collect information. Now for us, on the other side of that coin, as businesses, that's great. I want to target the people that love this book, and I want to reach an audience that cares about cookies. But for me personally, I don't like Facebook. And I put that aside and I do my job uh, as a social media marketer and I use it effectively for clients. Yes? So does Mark Zuckerberg put all of his data out there for public consumption all the time? Well, isn't that the ironic thing that there are things that he's totally fine to put out there for everyone to see and there's things that he doesn't want everyone to oh, see? Okay. So, so being, uh, somewhat. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But this is the double-edged sword of all social networks. So you can say the same thing to some degree to Twitter and to Pinterest and to Facebook and whatever other uh, social networks we love, Instagram and Snapchat and, and all of these networks. We love them, they provide something for us, 
but there's been a big shift in things. Uh, I should have pulled up the article, but there's been traditionally, you know, about two or three ways to make money. You know, one is uh, goods and services, one is something I'm forgetting. But this new one is giving away our privacy for a product. It used to be that you would pay for a subscription, uh, or pay for the one-time use of something, or pay for a service. It was a bit more tangible than the web and social networks came out and so you're not gonna make money really to sell a subscription to a social network but when you log in and and you see those ads on the side and at the top and once in a while when you click on them that's how these companies make money so the modern paradigm is you get something for nothing quote unquote and the nothing is simply you know give away your privacy and look at these ads and uh, you'll be happy and you'll connect and you'll see this 80 year old Texas man made a train of abandoned dogs <laughs> and then other such things. Beagle meets baby for the first time and totally melts. So as marketers um, it's very effective for us because we can reach the people that would care. So yes that's a lot of negativity that I just said but let's put it aside for a moment because um, if we're in the world of marketing if we've got something to sell or to have people subscribe to a newsletter or we've got a nonprofit organization where 99 percent of our profits go to homeless children great we still need to market and find an audience and inform them about our product or brand or whatever so social networks fill that niche in the modern world <clears throat> and for Facebook, well, it's got the largest user base in the world, one and a half billion people. I've, I've said billion, not million, billion. And there's about six billion, seven billion people in the world now. So, quote unquote, everyone is on Facebook. You can get Facebook on the desktop, on your mobile device, on those old phones. Um, and so when we... Um, when we create the account and use it, we'll see, we'll be able to target the people that we really care about, that really would care about us, our products, or brand and such. <coughs> so the way Facebook works is very similar to Google Plus in that you need a personal account before creating a business account. You need a personal profile before creating a business page. And just like uh, Google Plus, we don't need to fill in anything personal. We could make up a name to create the, uh, the account, though technically I really shouldn't say that because that's against their terms of services. That thing that no one reads but everyone clicks accept, in there somewhere it says you abide to use your real name. So uh, you can do so if you'd like. And we we're, we're going to create, you probably already have one, a personal account, we can use that. You don't need to create a brand new Facebook business account for a business page because we'll see that like Google Plus once you create the personal profile, you can create as many business pages as you want and have multiple people manage the business, everyone logging in with their own safe credentials. Unlike Twitter, um, where there's no differentiation really between a business account and a personal account. So here then we're going to, uh, you want to go to Facebook.com One funny thing here, this is way too conspiratorial, but look at this. If you try to go to facecrook.com, it takes you back to facebook.com. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, wait, they used to. Oh, that's interesting. I checked this a few months ago, and uh, you used to be able to go to facecrook.com, and it took you to facebook.com. Now, something else is here. Hmm. <laughs> They say that if you do that enough times, it will um, do exactly what happened. If you type in a particular word enough times, mm -hmm. then it will be offered for sale at some later date. <coughs> if you're looking to, for your own, to create your own uh, URL, mm -hmm. not to type it into the line like you just did, but to actually go to one of the sites to type it in through their system. Yeah, it could be a pretty lucrative business for people to do cyber squatting, which mm -hmm. is to um, buy these names, which can be 
pretty affordable and hold on to them and someone really needs it and then sell it to them. Uh, on another class this week, I think, or last week, we were looking at, uh, so I was looking at, look at buyingvictor.com and it was for like $12,000. So if I had bought that 10 or 15 years ago, I could have gotten it for $20. But anyway, here on Facebook, uh, you want to go to facebook.com and you've got uh, either create an account or sign up. And again, you can choose to uh, create a brand new account, but if you do create a brand new account, this is not asking you to put in the first name and last name of your company. It's asking for your real name and a birthday. You can of course make all of this up, but I'm not advocating that because I'm on record on this recording. I'm not saying fake this stuff. I'm just saying you could. And if you've already got an account, we can just reuse that personal account to create business accounts. So I'm not going to go through the process of how do you create a Facebook account. It's pretty straightforward. It will ask you for this information, which you might think is intrusive, but you have options to fill in here. It might ask you for a mobile number, and that's trying to prevent, on the one hand, spam, because if an account is linked to a real person and you get hacked, you might be able to retrieve your account with your phone number because whoever stole your account might not have your phone number. So that's a way to retrieve it. So either create one or click at the very top right to sign in. I'm going to sign in. So you want to sign in, and since it's a personal account, hopefully nothing not safe for work shows up here, but you want to have your personal account, and then we'll be able to read business accounts. So if you notice here, we'll do this together, but at the very top right corner, I'm sure it's got an official name, but this little black triangle next to the lock. There's a little triangle there. If you click that, I'm going to say these are the options because we have a variety of settings. We're going to look at a bunch of them. But first, what I see is use Facebook ads and then a list of companies. This is what I'm saying. As a personal profile user, I can create or become a manager, if someone allows it, of multiple businesses, business profiles, just like Google+. I don't believe there's a limit because notice all the ones I'm managing here for various companies and such, me and other people in my company. And uh, then we'll be able to edit each individual account. But you, you probably don't have that because you've got the, uh, you, you probably have never used Facebook for business. Maybe, and sometimes this happens, people create a Facebook account as a business, but that's technically wrong. You need to create it as a person and then create business pages. So there is a way to upgrade it. The reason we would want a real business page for our business instead of a personal profile for our business is because a business page has a variety of extra features that are not available for, for personal profiles. Extra features like insights, also known as statistics, also known as analytics. So basically the data, how many visitors did I get? What did they click on the most? What was most effective? Uh, what's the most popular time of day and week that I should be posting? You don't get the, any of that information from a personal profile. You get it from a business page. We'll also be able to talk about running uh, boosting posts and such. But you won't be able to do that until you've got a business page. Let me just get a show of hands. How many of you have at least one business page, like me? A few people. Okay. So what we're going to do then, if you don't have one, we're going to create one. If you do have one, you can go ahead then and log into it so that we can work with it. But most of us here don't have one. So here's how you do it. You've got a personal account. Click on the little options triangle, the little black triangle at the top right. And then click on create page. That's it. It was there the whole time. What you want to do is click Create Page. They used to call these fan pages, but as this has been evolving so much, they just call them pages. They used to also maybe call them business pages. They're just pages. 
Unfortunately, that's very generic because it's very easy to talk about, visit my Facebook page. Or, why haven't I seen your baby photos on your Facebook page? Well, page is the word reserved for business accounts. And profile is for a personal account, just like Google+. So let's try to remember that. Personal is profile, business is page. All right, so create a Facebook page to build a closer relationship with your audience and customers, aka market to them. We have six options, and we can create a Facebook page about just about anything. Uh, so we can have local businesses, companies. The difference between these two is that a local business needs to have a physical location. A company doesn't, perhaps doesn't need to. I could be a plumber, and I don't, have a, uh, I don't have a shop on Main Street. I visit everyone's location. So I could choose company. Maybe I am a plumber, and I also have a plumbing supply store on Main Street. So I could choose local business, because then that will allow people to give me reviews of my business, to check in on my business, and other location-based features, which we'll get to. But you might not be able to create one of these right now, because you have to confirm that it's a real location. And usually that happens by an automated phone call to your company's phone. And I'm not at the, I'm not at the front desk, so I'm not going to be able to answer it. For our purposes, just to learn this, you can choose any other one of these. Maybe brand, that's close enough. And we'll get, uh, we'll get the features. We can then learn how it all works. We can delete pages easily. And then once you're at your location, you can create it for real, so you can claim it as a real local business. Do you switch it over by that? Uh, yes, go ahead. Go ahead. So once I create the one I'm going to create today, which is meant to be that clinic or business, can it first be brand or product, and then I just convert it to local business? No, unfortunately, uh, it's... Well, I think they've made it easier, but what I'm saying is... Just to learn how this all works, we can create any one of these. And then when it's your real business, once you've gotten the knowledge, then create the local one. I think we can convert it between each one, but if we can't, then it's no big deal to just create one from scratch. Question? When you create a page on your profile, can people see your profile? No. Is it separate? It is separate, like Google+. Plus. Uh, the default, I believe, is that you will not see any association between the person, the private person, and the business. You can set it if you want, but by default you don't see that. Yes? Now, if I'm going to create the one that says brand or product, and I insert the address there, which is real, I'm just, like I said, I'm just not going to launch it at all. Um, why not just leave it like that? What's the benefit of the one with address? With the local business. Well, like I said a moment ago, the one with the local business, the, this is tied to a physical location, and what people will be able to do is check in. They will be able to go on their app, and if they're at your location, they go on Facebook and click check in, and then you'll get statistics of people that actually came to your store. You don't get that access from the brand or product. You get it from local business definitely, I think for company. But that's why you have to claim it and make sure that you actually have access to the physical location. Because your competitor could create an account in your name and wreak havoc on your reputation. But the only way that you can prove it's your business for real is that they're going to call you or send you something in the post, in the mail, so that you can confirm it. Yes? What do people get from checking in? What it's a bit more. A lot of the times we, we have to think about using Facebook in not really what do the people get out of it, what do us as a company get out of it. So why would they check in, I guess is what I'm asking. Um, the popularity of some services, which I think has waned a bit, the popularity of, of location services, like check-in services like Foursquare and, and Google check-in and Facebook check-in and such, it, it, it's, it's been like kind of like a game. Like, oh, I checked in here, um, I got points, uh, look where I'm at, kind of like a game, narcissism, whatever. Foursquare was one of the one of the networks that let you. That was all about checking into locations, and you would earn badges and points and stickers and fun stuff like that. Foursquare's really kind of gone downhill, so it's not that relevant anymore, unfortunately. And now it's about Yelp. You can check in on Yelp, 
And there, you're building reputation. You can see the leaderboard and say, I'm number one checking in on this Waffle House. Or I've given the most tips. I'm number one. So it's kind of a game. It's kind of a narcissism. For us as marketers, well, it shows that people are coming to our business. But for the people, it's a bit more of a game scenario. Yes? Did you say um, a week ago that one could have like a P.O. box address rather than the actual address of um, a store? Unfortunately, for this one, it won't, it won't work because your P.O. box is going to be, you know, the P.O. box of, your, of, your, uh, of the post office. If you've got a real business location, you want to use your real business location, not the P.O. box. You could use your P.O. box for some of these other ones, like if you're a cause and you want people to, you know, send you get well letters or something. Yeah, you can send that off to your P.O. box. But if you do want to claim a location that will exist on a map, the mapping system of Facebook, it's going to be one of these two. But this is not a, a business site where you can actually sell an item. You know, no. What you're doing is you're driving them to your website. That's right, and that's all the networks, again, that you're not going to be able to sell directly on Facebook or Pinterest or whatever at the moment. They probably will in a few years. But at the moment, it's really to get traffic, to drive it to your website or your Etsy or your eBay where you actually can sell products or your physical store. Yes. They don't have PO box anymore. Well, that's true for purposes of sending you mail, but it still holds true for, uh, for example, someone is on their mobile device and they search taco shops, and what and for whatever reason I used a PO box as my taco shop address. They're gonna follow the map looking for the taco shop and end up at the post office <laughs> and give you one star. So. <laughs> you better have a, a taco cart outside the post office. So this can be changed, I believe, and, but it's not a big deal to just practice and learn and then delete it. I'll show you how to delete it, of course, but I'm going to go with brand. Choose a category, and there's lots to choose from. This again is to help the right audience find you because there's 1.6 billion people using it. I want to find people that care about mine. I'm going to do my Victor's Bakery, so I'm selecting food and beverages. What's the name here? Victor's Bakery. And this is not the address. Again, this is not the, the, the short Facebook address. This is not going to give me automatically facebook.com slash Victor's Bakery. I need to claim that name on a future screen. Some of you will get that screen right away. Claim your Facebook custom address, and some of you will not. Unfortunately, there doesn't seem to be consistency about who can claim your name and at what point. Sometimes you have to, you have to get 30 likes first, 30 people that gave you a like to then be able to claim your name. Sometimes it lets you on the next screen. It's been very inconsistent, even for myself. So if you don't see how to claim your name right away, we'll, I can look at your account and then we can figure it out. But then here, this is the Facebook terms, this tiny link right here that doesn't look like a link. That's a link, and maybe one day you want to click that in, print it out, and pour yourself a glass of wine and read it by the fireplace, because there's a lot here about what you can and can't do with a Facebook page. Yeah, let's click the Get Started button. Next screen. All right, so for me, I've got four tasks at the top. You may have more, you may have less. If it's different, don't worry. First, I've got about. Tell about, tell people what your page is about. So here you have 155 characters to do, to write a brief bio, biography of what your business is. And yes, these things that we're typing in here are going to help you get found because Facebook itself has a built-in search. And this is not giving you results from the whole internet. This is only giving you results from inside the Facebook network. Just like when you do a search on Twitter, it's giving you results from in Twitter. When you search in Pinterest, it's results in Pinterest. When you do a Google search, a Yahoo search, a Bing search, Alta Vista search, whatever, those are giving you results throughout the whole web. But here we're going to be in the walled garden of Facebook. And so if someone is searching for affordable bakeries in Chula Vista, and those keywords happen to be somehow in my 
description here, I could be found. I'm not saying here to just throw 20 keywords here with no with no human readability. I'm saying write a sentence or two, 155 characters, that use your keywords, but that are also readable to people, not the search engines. So you have 155 characters, so I put in a bunch of my keywords here, but they read like real sentences. It's bakery, East Lake, California, recipes, modern, gluten-free. But I wrote it as, family-owned bakery in the heart of East Lake, California. We specialize in baking old-world recipes with a modern twist, gluten-free too. Website. So you can put your website or your Twitter or your LinkedIn or whatever. So just basically a link right here. So you've got whatever you want here. But I would recommend here your website where you're selling your product. Yes? And it's only one. Only one on this screen, yes. In my case, it is asking me, Choose a unique Facebook web address to make it easier for people to find your page. Once this is set, it can only be changed once. So, I see it here. Does anyone else also see the spot to, to let you add your Facebook address at the bottom? A couple people. If it doesn't, again, you. I've created several accounts before, so I guess it trusts me, and it'll let me claim these names. If you, this is your first Facebook page, it might not really know you as a business, so it won't let you claim one yet, most likely until you get between about 25 and 30 likes. Obviously, today we'll talk about getting likes. But uh, if you can claim your name, you, you could, you should. But if you then decide to change it, you can only change it one more time. No spaces, uh, symbols, and such. If you do that, save. Screen 2. This is this is, relates again to social networks in general. You're not going to get followers or likes or be circled and such if you don't have something to offer your customers. So you do it as soon as you can. You want to put your, your company logo or if let's say I'm an author and I'm my brand you want to put a nice headshot right here to show yourself. Um, I don't have a picture, so I'm going to skip it. But if you do have a picture, you want to add it. it. Looks like you can import from a website. You can do that on your own. If you don't put it now here, you can add it later. And I'll show you where to do that later. But I'm going to skip. I don't know if they've improved this, but I always skip this. Any question? I already said it up. I was wondering how I can go back to this bar, like where you can edit. You can only get to this bar the first time you create an account, but we can change these settings on a different screen that we'll look at together. Yes? I didn't even get that in favorites. I jumped to preferred oh. audience. Okay. Again, it might be different for different people, but as I was going to say, I don't even bother with this. So if you didn't see this, you're fine. What I was going to say about this is, well, you log when you first log into Facebook, it logs you into your personal profile. It shows all your personal friends' stuff and all of that. And then on the left side, it's going to show you some, some links, and one of the links is the favorites section. So this is saying, if you're going to manage your personal and your business pages, why not put your business page on the left side on your favorites to easily access it? Here's why I wouldn't do it. They might have changed this, they might have improved this, but I know that for me personally, and I've been doing this for years, I know that for me personally, I have accidentally posted the wrong thing on the wrong profile. 
by following the favorite. Because I'm going to see Victor's Bakery on my favorite, and I'm going to click on it, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's then going to uh, switch me over as a manager of that page. And I might be posting my latest coupon on my business page as Victor. And maybe I don't want Victor to be associated with one of these clients. So if that doesn't make sense, again, don't do this. I don't do this either. What did you get to add to favorites? I can, line number three is preferred page audience. Just like another student just asked? I, uh, I get it, but you might not, and that's okay. And like I'm saying, don't even bother with that screen. So I'm going to skip that. And then here we get to number four, which I hope everyone gets. This one's very important. If you don't get this one, we can see it on another screen. But this one is the preferred page audience. Again, there's so many people on Facebook. How do I reach the right audience? Here's a screen right here where we can try to target ourselves to be found by the right audience. This screen did not exist a few years ago, maybe even a few months ago, when you created a Facebook page. They're always updating and improving the, the network. This is one of those updates. Tell us about the page you'd most like to connect, the people you'd most like to connect with. Anyone can find your page, but we'll do our best to put it in front of the people who matter to you most. So you've got location, age, gender, interests. Location. You can include or exclude locations. Maybe you don't want your page to be visible in certain locations. And you can choose more than one. Let's say I'm going to be targeting Eastlake. So I can include country, state, city, zip, DMA. I don't know what that is. Or a... I can't see the end of that. But I'm going to type in a zip code. 91913. And it says, okay, you probably mean Chula Vista. Good. So I'm going to target that area. I also want to target a little bit more to the east, 91914. It's going to be that area. And finally, 91915. So I'm targeting Eastlake, all three environments. I could just put San Diego County. I suppose. But here, I am trying to be a little bit more specific to the people in Eastlake. But you could put San Diego County, City of San Diego, all of California, and you can put multiple targets. What do you do to add more? I, I, I pressed enter and that didn't. It should just do it. Let me see. I think one here and pressed enter. Hmm. Try to delete the zip code and type it one more time and hopefully you get a suggestion right below your zip code. When you get the suggestion, then click on that and it hopefully shows you the map. What's about this? Question. Yeah, I think I would have taken it to the Let's take a quick look. On this screen or on a different screen? No, I think it's a different screen. Yeah, uh, so let me get back to you. When I'm done with the setup, I'll be we'll be able to we'll be able to edit this again if you if you didn't put the right. Okay. So you can either um, put in one or three. I don't know if there's a limit, but I would not put ten things here because really, what's your target audience? This goes back to the larger concepts of marketing. If you take my SEO class. And there we talk about uh, an audience because it's it's not a good idea for you to 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 think or to act on the idea that my target audience is everyone. When we uh, get a client, we talk to them extensively in the beginning. Who are you selling your product to? Who is your product for? 
who would care about your product? And if the answer is, oh, everyone or anyone, that's the wrong answer. So we have to work with them to then target their audience because there was a, uh, there was a potential client that we, that we almost had a few years ago, and we asked them, who's your target audience? They said, everyone. Well, dr drilling down further, their product was baby strollers. So no, not everyone is going to care about baby strollers. Not even parents are going to care about baby strollers because their babies are out of the stroller. So the target audience of that was, eventually we will whittled it down to uh, young families with kids, young Latino families with kids. So that was the target audience, not everyone, not parents, young parents who are Latinos. That's who their target was. I'm saying that because, yes, I can put United States... Well, are you sure you're selling a product to all the United States? Would all the United States really buy or care about your product? Maybe yes, maybe no. I don't know. But I'm just saying, think about who really would care, and that's why this is a target audience. If you put in as much stuff here, you're not reaching specific people. So when you have the Latino, did that go by interest? Or did you just identify... Um, areas like, let's say, Los Angeles? A mixture of both. So when we look at interest, we'll see that this is also very specific as well. Mm -hmm. It should be specific. Let me get to that in one moment. Um, I can further, with, uh, with regards to location, I can further say everyone in this location, people who live in this location, people recently in this location, people traveling in this location. Yes, Facebook knows all that too. That's the, that's the data coming in from a check-in. I went to the Grand Canyon, I checked in on the Grand Canyon. Now as a marketer, I can target people that had recently traveled to the Grand Canyon that normally don't live there. People whose most recent location is within the selected area, but whose home is more than 100 miles away. So all that information that we fill into Facebook, for us as marketers, is amazing. For us as personal people, well, you decide. So whatever makes sense for you here, I'm going to leave the default. Everyone in this location. I'm not sure I'm doing it right. <laughs> uh, when I go to preferred page audience, I type in San Diego County. Because it says county, with it not county? Try to type it without the word county. Just San Diego, California, United States. Let's type San Diego and see what options it gives us. San Diego, San Diego, actually. Uh, let's just see. Let's try uh, from the options that we have here. We have to choose something. So let's see here. And then I'll just put uh, custom yellow. All right, so ages, again, everyone's going to care about my product? Uh, well, my product is alcohol, so no, 18-year-olds should not care about my product. Um, so if you need to target age ranges, you should. I'm going to target mine... I'm going to start, um, I don't know, I'll do 25 to 35. Obviously, that's a narrow audience, but that's, that's who you should be targeting. Um, all the big companies are, are about targeting an audience, really. So if you think about Nike, um, yeah, anyone can buy Nike shoes, but it's really much more targeted for younger athletic people. Um, so you want to think about that. What about genders? In this case, yes, everyone. And then interests. Well, I can start typing something, but what might be useful is to browse. Do you see a browse button here? Because you might not know what you're looking for really at this point. So if you select browse, you're going to see business, industry, entertainment, and these are all of the people that have identified somehow in their profiles that, they, that there's, this is an interest for them. Family relationships, 879 million people, potential audience to reach, business and industry, 1 million, entertainment, 1.2 million, 
so let's see food and drink 1 million so if I if I select food and drink then it could further go down to subcategories alcoholic beverages beverages cooking cuisine food and that's gonna go further and further so let's see what's under cooking baking 94 million Oh, that's a good point. I believe this number is for everyone on Facebook, not just as a push. Because there might not be 94 million people in California. You can add more, of course, more than one. Um, if you add too many, of course, then you're diluting your message. But you can you can always add to it and remove it. What do you do under the second part? Which second part? Uh, I, I type in, well, I type in real representation and it says have a drop down with pro se and then defense legal. Do any of those apply? Um, I would select the most specific one if possible, or if not, a higher level one is fine. I'm going with food and drink, cooking, baking. So potentially 94 million people. Let's say uh, I don't want to just, it might also start suggesting uh, because I might also think about these other ones. I, as I add one interest, it might suggest more, which you can of course ignore. You can type your own, you can browse. This is doing frying, barbecue flavor, culinary art. Uh, flavor. Apparently people have an interest in flavor. 110 million on Facebook. So I'll do flavor. Recipes. Sure. Again, I'm gonna, I don't want to I, I don't want to miss any audience. I'm going to add 40 of these. No, then it's way too diluted. If you want a hard number, I would say three interests and also three locations at the most. Yes. I'm going to come back to your uh, poll mm -hmm. because I'm thinking of a very specific audience mm -hmm. and I'm not sure how I would target. I want people who are coming from the international family. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, from say the United States. So, how are you selecting that? I'm typing in travel and let's see what pops up. We've got air travel, time travel, traveling. There's a, there's generic travel and then that suggests me tourism, adventure tra travel, agri tourism. So if you're not quite finding it under browse because there's just so many look th places to look at, I started to type an interest. I seem to have chosen one relevant, and then it's going to suggest me more. So maybe that's how you can find your, your target audience. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So we can edit this, of course. Um, later. I'm going to show you where this is at. These things, we get them right away when we create the account, but then how do you get back to them if you want to change them? We'll look at that. At the moment, I want to save. And then eventually, eventually I get to my my home screen here. Did you already cover um, this? Yeah, if you, uh, I, I didn't quite say it, but if you hover your mouse over any of those entries, there should be a little X on the right of it. You can click that and then you can delete it. Once I've chosen those demographics, it'll take me to my page. I have no logo here yet. I have no cover picture here yet. I have no call to action yet. I don't know what that is yet. Maybe I'll teach you, of course. I don't have this filled in, I don't have that filled in. This is one of these things that you have to do 
when you create the page so that you have something to show potential followers. Uh, unfortunately, they will judge a book by its cover. So if your Twitter account still has the egg, if your um, Google Plus page still has that little gift, if your Facebook page still has the flag, it's going to be a disincentive for people to like your page, to follow your page. So uh, we're going to get back to, to that, but it might give you a quick tour if you, if you close that that's fine, but just we'll look at it together. But here it says getting around. You're going to see three. Uh, you're going to see three or four navigation, three, four, or five navigation menu items up here. Mine shows four. Once you have your account established, you'll see a fifth one, which I'll get to. But this is where we navigate between the our actual page, any messages we've received, any notifications like someone liked my page, someone commented on a post, etc other advanced publishing tools. So we need to get used to this navigation up on top here. It's telling me, like Victor's Bakery, show support for the work you've done um, by liking it. When people visit your page, they will see that at least one person has been here before. So yes, you should like your own page at least so that there's one like. And we'll look at all the screens and learn about what all the buttons do and how to get followers and all that cool stuff, of course. But let's take our first break just to make sure everyone's on the same page. Um, uh, it's 1.30, so we'll be back at 1.40. And when we do, we'll proceed. If you went further than this, that's okay. When we come back, we'll look at all of these screens together.